So this is the beer. How long has it been fermenting for? It's been on since the 25th of June. So this is day five or six, day six. And what's in it? It's Maris Otter. Let me get the, there's, there's a recipe there. Proud strawberry burpee beer. So we've got pale malt, Maris Otter, Vienna malt, Challenger hops for bittering, Huel melon, which has got strawberry characteristics to it, mm -hmm. and California ale yeast. And then I've just put some strawberry extract in, but it's actual the real deal in it. Excellent. So is that all just mixed together and left in with the yeast? Yep. Can hear the bells coming out. Yeah. Should we take a gravity reading as well? Yeah. Right, let me give this a rinse out. Just some more star sand to go with that. <laughs> so everything's got to be sterilised before you use it, yeah? Yeah, everything's got to be absolutely spot on. At this stage, when you're, before you get to your um, cooling down, before you get to your boil, you don't need to bother about it. Okay. you just got to be a bit sensible, but the boil usually kills the majority of stuff. So this gravity reading will tell us how much potential alcohol is going to be in it? Uh, yeah, it should. It started off at 1.050. Okay. So it's still fermenting. That's a healthy looking fermentation there. Does look good. So we'll take a reading of that now. There's my turkey baster. From Alco as well. <laughs> you're a semi pro, man. You're a semi pro. Smells like beer. Mm. Kind of smells like cider, actually. That's probably because I've got cider all over the floor. <laughs> Right, fermentation's really taken off. So if you have a look, that's where it started, 1.050 down here. You just about see that there? Yeah. So that's the attenuation so far. So I think we're about 1.018. So I'll just write that down. And today's date, 1.018, and it's 37. Um, right, so what we've got to do now is make sure that it's up to quality standards. Official test. Mm. Oh, it's horrible. What do you think of that? That's I nice. don't, I don't, want, don't like beer. Sure. Yeah, I'm not a beer drinker myself. This will be for Zoe, my partner. Must I like? That's got some nice potential. Yeah. That's fresh. That is fresh. Obviously, it's not still fresh because it's not really finished fermenting. <laughs> but that's good. Right. Should we rack it onto the strawberries? Yeah. Want to help? Uh, should be alright, thanks. Yeah. Should be alright. Unless you want to do it? No, no, you carry on. Nervous now, bud. Uh, you're a professional, you'll be fine. Professional fucking disaster. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, we've got a proper look. Homebrew's got a proper little uh, setup. It is two fridges for fermenting, 
Or one for fermenting. One, one for kegs, one for, f for fermenting. And then he set up his own little tap with gas. So now a cheeky little pint whenever he wants. And obviously this is what he's got on the go at the moment. Ready? Yeah. So this is racking it, yeah? Yeah. So what we're doing is moving the beer from the fermenting bucket into the strawberries. Down the tube to the strawberries. And how long will that take now from about a week and a half to two weeks? Okay. And I will put a blow off tube on it, this mm -hmm. lid, I think, in case it explodes with all the extra sugars. <laughs> so it'll carry on fermenting with the strawberries in there, adding yeah. the extra sugar, yeah? Yeah, the yeast okay. will kick off again now, because it's not finished fermenting, there's mm -hmm. still yeast in the solution. Yeah. So we've got a point one eight of yeast, so it'll just kick off with whatever sugar's left. So that that gravity now could be up to one point zero five oh again, mm -hmm. for example. We didn't test it, but in that solution it could go up much higher, okay. and then it'll have to come back down with the alcohol. Excellent. Make it up as you go along. Spoon of Doom. Give this a quick stir whilst it's coming in. That's handy, the flow. Look at that, it looks like um, a strawberry ripple. cheesecake. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the ripple there. Yeah. I can really smell the strawberries now. Will that be a nightmare to uh, bottle with all those strawberries in there, clogging up and stuff? They should settle right down. Okay. They should settle right down, hopefully below the tap. <laughs> but they were quite low anyway, weren't they? Yeah. We just tried it. Let's get it all in. Should you put that right at the bottom or do you try and leave it up so it doesn't get the sediment? Um, because we're only going into secondary, yeah, I'm not too worried about getting any sediment in there. Okay. So it's only a little corner of sediment on yeah. the far side. If I was putting this into a keg, mm -hmm. I'd put it straight down, but hold it above the sediment. Okay. So it doesn't clog up the keg. Don't know if you can see that, guys, but there is the colour difference here. I'm guessing that's the sediment. That's right, yeah. Sweet. Suspense yeast. And it won't be sweet at all. It'd be minging. I can imagine it would. <laughs> <laughs> so are you watching the football tonight? Yep. What's your prediction? Oh. Time this goes up though. Oh. It's Wales, Wales. v Belgium. Wales. 2-0. Two 2-0 nil. Two nil to Wales. Yeah, yeah definitely. 2-0. You know nothing about football. <laughs> no, do I. I won't put any money on it. Right, let's kick it there. Too much sediment coming through. There we are. I'm That's right. the sediment down there. You see all the spent yeast. Wow, there's loads, isn't there? Yep. So I just get bin then. Or, if I would have done another beer, uh -huh. you could rack another beer straight onto it okay but it's, it's a dirty way of doing it but yeah. it does work so maximizing the yeast really yeah. but if i spend all day making a beer yeah i'd rather put it onto fresh green yeast yeah. rather than have the risk of that not doing its yeah. job if and i'm guessing it affects the taste then as well um i've never done it if i'm honest with you, okay but I, as long as it's the same type of beer uh -huh. then there shouldn't be a problem sweet it shouldn't be a problem so this needs to go back in the fridge, sorry, the fermentation fridge. Um, get rid of this. Oh. 
for a week and a half to two weeks. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put the oh the airbox in the house. I'll get that in a minute. So how many uh, pints will that produce? Forty pints. Wow. Ish, give or take. About fifty bottles. Okay. Better get to Wilco's, bud. I know, isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing, guys, is we're gonna split the the brew um, between us. So my partner's already ninety to ten. In my favour. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we only allowed. Uh, how many bottles does she have? So Nineteen in my favour. Nineteen in your favour. That'd be forty. So five. she'll have forty-five yeah. bottles in homebrew. Yeah. For all these hard work. Have to make some more for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna split it fifty-fifty. So we'll have twenty-five bottles each. Um, what I'll do is uh, this video will probably go up in the week now. Um, and then we'll come back if we're allowed uh, to film. That's fine. Yeah, film a bottle. Do you really film, film a bottle? bottle in? Yeah, we can show Morris like. And it won't be very long. You won't be very long watching no. bottling. We'll just speed it up or something. Your subscribers all go watching really? bottling. It's so boring. Oh dear. You How can do the bottling. I'll do the bottling. There yeah. you go. I'm gonna do, have a go at doing the bottling. So Brilliant. I hate bottling. Hence the kegs. <laughs> So if it all goes wrong, it's my fault, <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> but thanks for watching, guys. Um, we'll see you soon. Ta-da. Bye.